I'm glad I'm nearing the end of my life. Oh, it's not that I want to die. It's that I don't want to witness and be a part of the country I fear we are becoming. You see, I've known real freedom, and my children and grandchildren will not be so fortunate, it seems. It's ironic in that I recall my father saying the same thing in the faltering years of his life, even though I didn't quite understand the full weight of his sentiment. We older people have a grand perspective from which to view the future impact of government intervention, We've seen many such alterations in the past and been witness to the crippling eventual effects on relationships, personal freedoms, and the incentives to excel and provide for ourselves. The young are less inclined to believe in slippery slopes without the benefit of these experiences. I remember when it was a shameful thing for a young woman to get pregnant out of wedlock, and now it's become almost a badge of independence. I recall when it was very difficult to obtain a divorce. Of course, once you did, it wasn't something you talked much about because it was viewed as failure and you were ashamed. Today, either party just needs to want out for the sake of personal happiness. There was a time when the vast majority of people were extremely reluctant to take a hand out because it was shameful not to be able to stand on your own two feet. For those who did accept help, most sought to pay back their benefactors, either directly or by helping someone else when there was truly a need. Today, it's a matter of pride when you can work the system. I recall when if you regularly took something not earned by your own hand, you were known either as a bum or a thief. Now, you're a helpless victim of childhood trauma or social intolerance with no responsibility to overcome the demons of the past. I mourn the loss of shame. It had a purpose and served us well as a motivator to do better and overcome. I'm very fond of one particular axiom that I found extremely useful in my life. It's simply this. There's a price to pay for everything we do in life. Nothing is without consequence or reaction. If I want to be truly free, I must accept the responsibility for myself with the full knowledge that the going could get treacherously rough and probably will. If I prefer the government taking care of me, I need to understand that I give up the right to control all facets of my life. If they pay for my health care, they will control my actions that could affect my health, such as the amount of salt I consume. They will decide how healthy I need to be and what treatments I'll get based on things other than my own wishes or even needs. Things like imbibing a bit more than they think is good for me or puffing on a cigar after they warn me of the dangers. Of course, how much money is in the kitty at the time will certainly play a part and no doubt my age. There are plans afoot to inspect our homes for required compliance with efficiency standards and to install remote control thermostats. They're moving to require little black boxes in our cars to keep tabs on our driving habits and new banking regulations to track our purchases. If you're a smoker, some states will not allow you to congregate even in a private club with other consensual smokers. It's unhealthy, you know. I ran for Congress in the year 2000, and the biggest lesson out of the many I learned was that the main concern expressed by voters was whether I would protect their slice of the government pie. Enough said. I lost. Individual freedom, capitalism, and an open marketplace make for a messy society. It can be harsh unfair and difficult to accept much of the time. There will always be greedy people who feel enough is never enough. Thank God they create massive amounts of jobs for those of us not bent in that direction. There will always be those who don't have the wherewithal to become a brain surgeon. This is a good thing since floors will always need to be swept. There will always be a certain percentage of people unemployed, 
But how else do we learn that life is better when we're working? There will always be dropouts to inspire the rest to achieve. There will always be grasshoppers that dance in the summertime and beg the diligent-minded ants for help in the winter. Freedom can be a tough thing to watch. When we seek to totally eliminate the messiness and inevitable suffering that come with freedom by forcibly balancing the scales of fairness for everyone at all times, there's a price to be paid. We lose incentive, achievement, and self-determination for the good of the whole as determined by the elite among us. We become slaves to a misguided concept of fairness. Take a look at Denmark providing cradle-to-grave care by the government. Their major contributions to modern man make an embarrassingly short list. They did give us Legos, however. Our country was founded through the grandest experiment in human history, and in spite of all the messiness and our faults, we became the greatest producing nation that ever existed. People were allowed to struggle to fail, even to suffer, and they were motivated to achieve. With the world's most free marketplace in front of them, their dreams were allowed to soar, and soar they did. Millions from other countries wanted in, and we let them in. We always have, as long as they came through the front door. I am proud to be an American. If you're not, I feel sorry for you because you will probably become a permanent victim. Oh, I won't give up. That wouldn't be very American, at least in the America I've known. I'll work hard to right this ship until the very end and hope like hell it's not too late. Are we still willing to pay the harsh price for true freedom and opportunity? Or will we become a nation of baby birds with our mouths open? The power is still in the hands of the people, if we only have the backbone to use it. We'll see. We'll see. Now I know exactly what my father was telling me so many years ago. He was recalling the tough, desperate years of his childhood as he ate salt pork in the old sod house on the plains of Kansas and relished in the freedom and opportunities he had experienced. He knew that the freedom I had lived was in part already an illusion and was destined to fade even more with time. He was sad for me in what I had missed and what was to come. I am now sad for my children and grandchildren for the freedoms I've known and they likely will not and I can't bear to see it.